How are you guys doing? Welcome back. Today is February 6, 2022. I'm having allergies at the moment. If I sound congested, I already talk fast. So if I sound congested and all that, I do apologize. But hey, it is what it is. Thanks for being here. My hair looks ridiculous at the moment. Good stuff. Good start. I'm not going to restart. My name is Evan. This is By the Bulls Trading, the only stock trading channel that encourages you to take your trading just by the bulls. Let's get it, my boys. So if you are brand new here, I appreciate you guys staying around. 25 part class is very much available to you to go watch on my channel. I'm pretty confident you found this video. You can find my course pretty easily. It's 25 free lessons. Go check that out. It's on here. I'd love for you to go check it out. With those lessons, I do talk about supports, resistances, trend lines, patterns, EMA lines, volume profile, RSI, Stochastic, and the Vortex Indicator. All nine of those things have been on the screen for you shown. That's what our chart looks like today. If you want more great content from me, because how would you not? Tattoos, piercings, dumb tropical short shirts, charts, it's all great stuff. Starting tomorrow, and we'll see how it goes this week, every other video, so Tuesday and Thursday's videos, will be exclusive for my Discord, my Patreon, and my newsletter subscribers. If you really enjoy my videos, the newsletter is free. I'm going to email the people tomorrow. Go into the description box down below. Join the newsletter. Go check it out. Get exclusive videos and exclusive content. I'd love to have you down there. If you want extra content, five newsletters a week, five newsletters at night a week, and in the morning too. Early video access, my transparent portfolio starting this week. You want to track my trades? I started that up as well. All these kinds of great things day trading alert bots, all this stuff, check the Discord in the description box down below. Now, before you join today, next weekend, Sunday, is my anniversary of me starting this whole business. I'm gonna have a special deal, special for new people. Wait till then and get excited. Stay tuned for more, it's coming next weekend. Lastly, all I wanna discuss, oh man, elbow just popped really nice there. All I want to discuss is that the macro markets look neutral. They look okay. Today, we're going to cover eight great stocks that you should be watching this week. And I'm going to see what I see and talk about them with you guys. With that being said, my cat's scratching to get in. I couldn't get to the first chart. Let's get into it. So first is AMCR. What I want you to notice is first, the first three letters makes me triggered. No, but what's really great is that the side here, it's not a very volatile stock. It just had earnings. It's an obvious overreaction. This is not the quickest moving stock. There's my price targets. You want to zoom in and try and steal those from me. Thief. But we can see right here, it's really good looking. Slow moving, slow grinding. Great play for a beginner. On top of that, let's say that this great POC, which is the strongest support on the time frame, this support and this trend breakdown, 1120 is an absolute steal for a play like this. Yes, it may drop 4% for an easy support play, but right here, we can risk easily at most 1% or 2% to make about 5 or 6 And again, 6%, you're not going to be calling home like, dear mom, I did it. I'm now successful. No one cares, but 6% risking 1% is great. So this is a really good channel up. Clear support, clear resistance overall. I love what I see. Earnings, overreaction came down. Earnings, overreaction came down. Earnings, overreaction came back up. Same here. And again, it tanked, coming back up. Let's check our indicators to show us some more clarity. What's so cool about this channel, besides me, new kid, is that we actually don't use indicators to scan with or chart with. Indicators will show you four things. Momentum, trend, volume, and volatility. That's it. These four things are your icing for the cake. Technical analysis is the cake. Num, 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 num. And the indicators is the icing. Ooh, tasty and sweet. So as we go through this, do not rely heavily on indicators. They should show you some great stuff. I will show you some great stuff, but they're just used for clarity. <laughs> With that being said, let's check it out. I love allergies. So AMCR here off the rip. The 10 cross is pretty worthless. You cross the 10. And it really, it does an okay job. Like this is, like if I zoom in, this is fine. Okay. But again, like action over here um, is not fine. So would I wait for a crossover? No. I'd use the email lines to show me if I had value. Every time we're below all three email lines, we had a great value. And right down here, we have it. You can enter a stock usually with two ways. Value, like, yay, you go to the store and go, that's a good value. And you buy something. 
Same here. Or you wait for a momentum crossover. This play with the email lines being so kerfuzzled, I wouldn't wait for that. Now you could wait for like a 50 cross. Those are better. But both are so far away, I wouldn't worry about it. I look for value. We know we have value because our size at 37, which is great. The TA shows it. Stochastic is low. If it does turn sooner than later, which it looks like it's going to right now with a curl, you can see anywhere over here, makes a very small bullish divergence we're going to see. But again, bulls are low, bears are high, the blues crossing the red. If it does show some life tomorrow, you may have found the bottom here. It's important to note the reversals here take a week or two sometimes. So no real point rushing in right now, but it's a great watch list item. AMCR, yes, it does have AMC in it, which just, oh, to me, but I'm just, just kidding. But overall, it's a great slow moving beginner stock. I would definitely watch this if I do like what I see. Next is Avid, a gorgeous horizontal wedge. It has higher lows, lower highs that each have three hits. Any one of you idiots, any one of me idiots, can draw a trail line from A to B. It's not hard. Now for me, staying inside the lines, coloring is pretty hard. But for this, it's not very difficult. To have two or three, or in this case, four or five hits is much more consistent. AVID shows it's definitely starting to consolidate. The moves have gone wildly large to now just comically small, like me. That's what she said. Got them to me. Tears. So this is a really good looking play. Low risk. Can pay wager three or 4%. To make about nine or ten, <coughs> if not more, for a breakout. But overall, I do love what I see. When it comes to our indicators, I'm not gonna cheat. If the 50 and 200 EMA lines are in the middle of the chart and in the middle of the triangle, it shows consolidation, furthering our idea it's consolidating. Let's check it out. Oh, gee, Willikers, who knew? There's your resistance, there's your support, all three in the middle. This is definitely consolidating. We're going for a breakout play here. So what's great about this, we're on the low side of it, our side's low, <coughs> stochastic gets low, starting to curl, and if it does, if it does hold bullish divergence, bulls just crossed over, I mean we have some form of life here, but not the greatest value. It's logical though, because of course it's consolidating. AVID here, I love what I see, I think it could be a bit lower, or we can wait for some more momentum. Give it a day, but overall I think for a horizontal wedge and a breakout, overall I do love what I see. Next is CCO. We've played CCO. I've called CCO. It's great because the angles at which we played off of have changed drastically as time has gone on. But now it's kind of starting to settle at this angle here. We have nice lower highs. And of course, you could probably find some form of horizontal wedge forming in here. But overall, anywhere near 280, 270 is a great value. Right here, it's probably 5% higher than I want it. You may need a way for a drop down or wait for some form of crossover, which we'll discuss when we look at the indicators. But the POC is our strongest support. This is our strongest support. Great channel up pattern here. Yeah, it does break out, but of course, these do really match up well at the bottom here. Overall, it's very bullish. I do love what I see. Let's check our indicators. There's going to be your go signal tomorrow if you like momentum plays. If we hold over the 10 tomorrow, which looks like we're doing pretty good right now, if we hold over the 10 tomorrow, and our next little candle looks like this, for example, and it holds. You can then go over the 10 EMA line, which we have, and then play on a crossover. <laughs> My cat's getting ornery. With us also at that point, using the 10 EMA line as a stop loss area. That looks great. Again, that kind of makes sense and fits the narrative here because our side's fair, which I mean it's showing life. Stochastic is, again, fair, but showing life. And then bulls just crossed under. We need to see some more momentum. But CCO here, you could buy 5% less for a fantastic value purchase, or you wait for it across the 10 or 50 EMA line and then play that area as a stop loss, let that bad boy rip. But overall, CCO, I've discussed it. I love what I see. I definitely watched this. It looks fantastic. Next is DNB. Clearly came down from a nice little trend down here, a little, you know, a little broadening wedge down, now into a gorgeous ascending triangle. I love these setups the most. Folks said 16.7 is the bottom, and they pushed it all the way up to 20.65. Then they said, actually, 18 is the bottom, push it all the way up to 20.60. Then they said, well, damn, actually, 19 is the bottom, push it all the way back up to 20.60. Now they're going to buy it a bit higher. 
We can see bulls have all the power here as bears have nothing. This is a very clear resistance, which helps us with our price targets and our goal setting, which is huge. And then this trend line and this old resistance area that now became a support shows us a good value. If it opens up here tomorrow, can you buy in? Sure, you're risking 4 or 5% to make 4 or 5%, which I do not love, but maybe there's a momentum play here. But overall, it went from being a downtrending stock, but I don't see many other, you know, you have maybe this over here. That's the same exact step after a sell-off kind of thing, right? But of course, it broke down quickly. Over here, though, great value. POC's holding us. Overall, I do love what I see. Let's check our indicators together. Look at that. The 200 was a resistance. Fat resistance. Now look at it. It's being our support. Tomorrow, could you play a crossover? Well, 10 crossovers look pretty great, don't they? Especially for like day trading and swing trading opportunities, right? 3 or 4% pretty easily. If we cross that tomorrow, we go green, right? I actually have the nice little rectangle set up for us. It goes green tomorrow like this. You can play that crossover. Does that make sense with our indicators? It sure does. RSI, it's fair. That makes sense. We're going sideways. Stochastic is low and crossing. Bulls are on top. Bears are low. Overall, this is a momentum purchase tomorrow. Does it become better if it drops to 1925? Sure. That's a great value purchase. But right here, it's a very great momentum purchase a bit higher. But overall, DNB, I'd watch this. I do love what I see. That round, that should be a wrapper. Next is PFSI, a fantastic looking little baby trend up. I'm watching the support play more than anything. What we're gonna use to determine what's better, the trend line up or the horizontal play is the 200 EMA line. When we look at that, if it's going sideways, support line. If it's going upward, trend line. So we'll see which one has more weight put in it based on the EMA lines. POC is gravitational, drops down and wants to pull us back up. Very consistent higher highs, very consistent across the board higher lows. Earnings, overreaction, folks cashed out on it. But I played this before, it's always been very bullish. Down here, it's a great value, you could probably risk five or six percent, a bit too much for me. I want closer to 58, but even then, five or six percent to make 20 is still a fine value. Again, if the email lines are going sideways, I'll put more emphasis into that. If it's going upwards, more emphasis into the trend line, let's check. So the 200 has done this, gone up. So I would put more emphasis with the trend lines going upward. Now, of course, the short-term ones are tanking because it's an earnings overreaction, right? But overall, from when this pattern started, the 200 has been going upward. So I love the support play, but I would also put more emphasis into this trend line, which means value for me is a good 3% lower. So you want to buy value? Wait. If you do want to see a momentum play, you have that as well. 10 cross is very playable tomorrow. Goes up 2% and stays. Play the 10 cross over. 10 cross, gorgeous. 10 cross, gorgeous. 10 cross, gorgeous. Overall here, could go either way. Indicator shade, it's a great value. Makes sense. Stochastic, lower lows. That's good. But what's this, everybody? These higher lows? That's weird because the price action shows lower lows. That is a massive bullish divergence. Uh, Papa loves to see that. If we, all, if we do turn around soon come down again there's a good possibility if we do kind of tank again you could play off of this trend line to buy into as well which is pretty great bulls are low bears are high it's a good value purchase on a macro level but for a swing trade or a day trade i do want to see a 50 or a 10 ema cross tomorrow or i do want to see it four or five percent lower either one of those pfsi becomes extremely extremely lucrative for a lower risk play overall i love what i see it looks fantastic Next is RPT. I can make my one funny joke of the day. I see that we have developed a gap. Gentlemen, <laughs> gaps like to be filled. Hardy har har. And so what's great about this with RPT is that this gap right here is gonna give us at least a good one or 2% buffer once it does get filled if we can buy into value. What do I mean? If we do see $12 tomorrow, maybe even as low as $11.85, we can use this little gap as some kind of like, hey, we have at least this to fill before we continue down farther. But overall, minus that dumb joke I make in this area, very simple support play. I call these plays idiot proof because you lose your support wherever you draw it. Maybe it's in my line, maybe it's here, maybe it's there. Wherever you lose your support at, you can just cut it and move on. If it does come back, buy back in and go along. But right here, easy risking 2% of most. Resistance is almost six and a half, so right about there is a good three to one. 
a full move is closer to six to one. Super easy, you're not getting much convergence, but overall, it's a great value for a horizontal play. Again, why am I thinking it's horizontal? Well, because the email line as of recently, over what? If I could click, you idiot. Over the last uh, 220 days, it's up 8%. It's pretty flat, right? It's pretty consolidating. So even though this is pointing upward, it's not a large percentage at all. 10 cross, it gets pretty hairy. If anything, the 50 cross is what you're looking for. So I mean, would you play a 50 cross here? No, it's 5% away. You can't, we just have good value. But Evan, how do you know we have good value? Well, one, the TA shows it. Two, the email lines are all on top. Three, RSI 36 is a good value. Stochastic is low. I mean, I don't really see a fat divergence or anything. You could argue. That's, a, that's higher lows and then a flat bottom. So, I mean, that's close. Um, nope. You know, the small bearish one, that's why I came down this last move. They got too big for its britches. But, of course, bulls are low and bears are high as well in the vortex. RPT, you could play a 50 cross. It's too far away. I'm not waiting for that. If it does good consolidate longer here, takes its sweet old time that drops, sure, the 50 cross is available. But overall, RPT closer to about 12 bucks is a fantastic deal. Overall, I do love what I see. I would definitely watch list it. Next is TGB Tasco Mines. I called TGB recently, and I called it again. I actually called it over here. Sorry, over here, and went doop, like 10%, and now we're back down. Uh, I want to get greedy and get another one. What's important to know is that TGB does have pretty intense lower highs, even as of recently, in the same exact middle here. So this support may be forming an, a descending triangle, which is very similar to an ascending triangle, but bearish. So you got to be very careful about that. What I do like, though, is that the overall trend here is higher lows and lower highs. So, but as of recently, it is showing more bearish action. This does break down beneath $18. It could be a very, very easy short. Sorry, $1.80. But right here, very strong support, old resistance, old support, old resistance, great old support. Anywhere in here is great, good trend line. I want to buy maybe 2.5% lower at 180. It's an absolute steal with great reward to be had here. When it comes to our indicators, once again, resistance trend, supporting trend, all three email lines are in the middle, showing further consolidation, further mean we're going to go for a breakout. Chef kiss. So what's great, you can put the 10 email on crossover, cross the 10, you're good to go. Cross the 10, you're good to go. The 50 is definitely way stronger, as you can see. The 50 is definitely a much stronger EMA line. I wouldn't wait for that. I would just wait for us to have value, which we already have. RSI, it's low. Stochastic, if it does hold, keyword if it does hold, is a figgity fat bullish divergence. No bearish. Got higher the high. Lower high, that matches up here. And then bulls are low, bears are high overall. TGB here is a great value, just a bit lower. Or for a small crossover of the 10, just a bit higher. But TGB here, I love what I see. Yeah, I'd give it a day. I'd give it even two days. But right here, I'd watch this. I do love what I see. Last is TSE Trinzio Pluck.com. Another nice horizontal wedge. If I'm going to be honest, I may be a bit aggressive on this trend line. I could argue, and probably would argue, that you may be seeing it a bit lower towards maybe $50 or $49 off this trend line. Keep that in mind, um, that it may drop a little bit lower. I almost just said those Lincoln Park lines. Keep it in mind, I resigned to whatever. Remember that song I tried so hard and got so far? No one? Just me? Okay. So TSE here. Just a bit lower, two or three percent is ideal. And again, knowing that the trend line may be forming off of this move, I would definitely wait for a value purchase. I'm not really in love with a momentum purchase here, especially because we still have lower highs across the board. But anywhere towards 50 and 48 dollars will become an absolute steal for this play. Once again, EMA lines are all in the middle, further showing consolidation. Can you buy the crossover? Sure. But I think, again, buying towards 48, 49, 50 is a much better value. RSI has room to dip just a bit more, but still a good value. Stochastic is low. But look it. You want to wait for the blue to cross the red. There's no sign of it even curling up at this point. It may take another few days. And then bulls and bears are tied. TSE here is a fair value for a breakout play. But I think TSE 4 or 5% lower is a value purchase for a great play. I'd watch this tip. I love what I see. I just want to see it a bit lower if I'm being honest. There you guys have it. I appreciate it. Once again, 
stay tuned for that great deal coming or don't i don't really care but it works for you it's fine otherwise we're gonna see you guys tomorrow for another watch list i do appreciate y'all so so much for being here we'll see you guys later thanks